All right, time to talk to Tilda, who's in the green room, the planting room. Welcome back, Aloy. Yeah, thanks. Well done, Aloy. Despite my reservations, you managed to secure silence and his weapon. You're truly a shining example of Liz's fortitude. I am myself. I've been thinking about what you said at your house. How you were friends with Elizabeth. It was more than that. Wasn't I it? knew it! Perceptive as ever. You're right, we were together for a time. Okay, so... What Just happened? the way she talked about her. I was an orphan. It was... I had always been It was alive. a thought, anyway. By my 30s, I was starting to wonder if that was simply my fate in life. And then I met Liz. We kept running into each other at conferences. We'd have coffee. At some point, it became drinks. I thought it was just shop talk, an exchange of ideas, but then I was surprised at how much I looked forward to seeing her. Soon we were flying halfway across the world every other week just to meet up. For the first time, I didn't feel lonely. I could imagine a future where I wasn't. I think Liz felt the same way at first. She had lost her mother a few years back. I filled a void for her. I know I did. But as time passed, it seemed as though she wanted less when I wanted more. And so we ended things. So helping me, restoring Elizabeth's dream, it's what? A, a second chance, yes. I made a mistake leaving Earth while Liz stayed behind. I should have done more. So when I saw you, a woman who has carved her own remarkable path, beyond even what made Liz a phenomenon, I knew I had to help you. To do right by her. I don't know if you noticed, but during one of the cutscene panning around, she actually has modified this place and she has put up some holograms of paintings. But at least I saw the one behind her. Why do you think Elizabeth pulled away? I've wondered that for a thousand years. She was brilliant. Right there. Visionary. She cared so deeply for the world. For the betterment of humanity. But it also felt like she kept everyone at arm's length, including me. She never wanted to share her burdens. I think, in the end, she had a core that she never let anyone be part of. Sometimes I wonder if anyone really knew her. I found a recording of you and Elizabeth back in the Proving Lab, after Farzineth's attempt to steal Gaia. Yes. A most unpleasant conversation. She said something after the call. I think she regretted how things ended between you. Did she? <coughs> All this time, thank you for telling me. A part of me does I've always hated yeah. that those were the last words we ever said to each other. And that her last impression of me was as a functionary of Far Zenith, not who I truly am. I can't, I can vaguely recall, I don't think, I don't know if Tilda was the one Elizabeth was arguing with about like stealing the copy of Apollo or like trading the copy of Apollo for the cryogenic stuff or whatever. Um, but I will remember that conversation between her and the IT, like the software, like hacker guy who like he was like you need to let somebody in like you can't do all this on your own and she really did like and so that's why i thought this whole game was going to be aloy realizing like she can't aloy can't do things on her own like she i mean she can but that's no way to live right like there's no way like to isolate yourself like that but like i get it like liz felt like she had this great burden and like didn't want to necessarily share that pain with others or that the chair the burden itself you know she didn't want to put that on other people like she cared so deeply but kept herself at bay i think honestly that combination of things is a really fascinating like combination i guess like i think 
Elizabeth was a truly fascinating person who, like, I don't know. Like, it's, it's already been said, I think, in a lot of the game itself, but, like, just the fact that she could care so much, but, like, didn't quite know how to do it on, like, an individual basis, on, like, a personal basis, just, I don't know, leads to, like, fa like a fascinating idea of, like, a character, of a person, like, of someone's character, you know? Why did you make the data channel look like your house? I built that house as a shelter to weather any storm. A safe place, not just for me, but for the art stored in its depths. Cultural artifacts of incalculable value. Truly, some of the greatest achievements of human civilization. And you wanted Beta to see them? Yes. I think we already Her had this conversation. Was so cold and technical I thought if she could experience yeah. it would bring something else into her but it's life. different here a heritage every bit is data being drummed into I'm sorry I had to cut off she needed its shelter uh, I think we already did this you said before that you're not like the others Enos. that you never were mm. out of necessity I'm not proud of it but complicity became a means of survival both when Earth was consumed and when the colony on Sirius was destroyed. I did what I had to. But I resolved to remain one step ahead of the others to try to undo what damage I could. Hence the data channel with Beta. The secret passage into their base and the little trick I pulled to save you. When it's time to break into the Zenith base, what can we expect? I'll go over the full layout once you've assembled it. Oh, cards. good. Suffice it to say, we will need to push as fast as possible to Beta and Gaia's location, dealing with heavy resistance along the way. There are also printing facilities where the others have been amassing the natural resources they've stripped from the region. What for? First for use in the base's infrastructure, and then to fabricate more Spectre drones, a small army of them. When I was out in the wilds, I saw a shuttle take off from the island. Heading for space. It was likely ferrying materials to and from our ship in orbit. After hundreds of years luxuriating in our digital comforts, the ship was barely space worthy when we made our escape. Disaster can strike at any moment. We've learned our lesson. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh yeah, Stanley Chen was the guy from, La like, the Las Vegas guy. When I was in the ruins of Vegas, I found data on a man named Stanley Chen. I think he was a Zenith. Stanley, ever the optimist. He was one of the good ones. When we established our colony, he built an exact replica of Las Vegas in virtual reality. Lights, shows, gambling, every detail perfectly recreated. And while others cloistered themselves in their own fantasies, he flung his doors wide to everyone. The way you're talking about him, I'm guessing he didn't make it back to Earth? No, he perished when our colony was destroyed. He would have been thrilled to discover that part of his beloved city survived. When Beta escaped and hid in an ancient research facility, I saw another one of the Zeniths, Verbena. Who was she? A dull star amidst a sea of brighter constellations. Oh. No. Unlike most of Far Zenith's members who amass their wealth through shrewd business deals and technological achievements, Verbena inherited her billions. Her father had achieved great success in the luxury holotourism industry. At age 24, she became the world's most eligible bachelorette, branding herself a life designer. Oh, great. Someone who leverages their fame to influence the choice of others. Yep. What? Like a cult? In a way, yes. Well, she must have done something right to have survived this long. She was her own brand of ruthless. That much is true. But even rats can cling to a vessel for escape. Did not think highly of her. What can you tell me about Gerard? He was the head of the world's largest financial conglomerate, and as such had dealings with almost every major corporation. It made him one of the wealthiest people on Earth, and certainly the wealthiest among Farzeneth. 
What does one person do with that much money? Buy more, more power, more influence. Gerard's always believed himself to be a refined patrician, <laughs> able to maintain control with a polished smile. But beneath that exterior is a cold and calculating operator. They're all. It was his decision Psychopaths. to restrict Beta's upbringing to her digital educators, the avatars of the Apollo database, while we were painted as her benefactors. Well, we'll deal with him soon enough. And the others. I can't, I always mix it up. If it's psychopath. I'd very much like to see his face when he realizes we've beaten him. When it's psychopath or sociopath, but like the like head of like large corporations are one or the other. I can't remember which one. Um, but they tend to be kind of like Silence, like the cold, unfeeling, brutal, practical, intelligent, highly intelligent, you know, um, but fairly uncaring about others, they just uh, are very somewhat, nar they're very narcissistic, um, care about their own appearance and the constant, like nothing's ever enough, right? It's a constant amalgamation, uh, acquiring of things, people, resources, ideas, you know? It's never, they're never satisfied. So Eric, was he always a bloodthirsty psychopath? I believe he got worse over time. On Earth, he was the founder of a profitable private military company. A band of cutthroats, in other words. Even as governments abandoned human combatants in favor of automated warfare. He found success with clientele that required a more personal touch. There were also rumors that he personally hunted and killed his targets. On occasion, all for the thrill of it. Like that short but on story. Sirius, he retreated to virtual reality simulations. In them, he could go on rampages as violent as he pleased, though I suspect with diminishing satisfaction. All of us tribe believes he was one of the greatest people from the old world. Then they would be quite disappointed to meet him. Though yep. I'm sure he'd bask in the adoration. And then killed him. Uh, but no, it's like that that short story. I can't remember what it's called, but like where that uh, that guy, he's like like an old English guy. He's like has this whole island where he's like you know hunted like all kinds of animals, you know, and like brings them in and and has hunted everything that he can. And like now it's all like it's not as there's no thrill anymore except for when he hunts humans. And so now he brings humans in um, and hunts them. And the short story is about, I think, the at least one of the people getting out. I think there's like two people that he brings on, maybe, or just one. But one of them eventually gets out. But uh, it was a creepy story. It's one of those short stories you, you read in like high school or middle school or something in your English literature classes. It was uh, one of those that stuck with me, for sure. Okay, so I've had run-ins with a handful of Zeniths. What about the rest? An array of the wealthiest people on Earth. Titans of their industries. And let me guess, all selfish and ruthless to the core? Most, but not all. There were a few with whom I got along. Annika Merjani, for instance, was always delightful. She founded the Holonet's most successful dance channel and was herself mesmerizing to watch. And I had fascinating discussions with Song Jiao about her work in cellular biology. Our immortality treatments are due in part to her achievements. But then there were others like Devin Miller, the CEO of a fast food printing corporation. Yeah. His only real preoccupations were perfecting his golf swing and taking self hollows. When I think about all of us, we really should have accomplished more. We had eternity. Have you figured out how Silence's weapon works? No, and he's been very careful not to allow me near it. I'll admit it bothers me, but regardless of how it functions, I am confident it will deactivate the other shields on mass. How many of them are in the base? Ten, including Eric and Gerard. Only a handful of us made it to our ship when our colony collapsed. Which is crazy to think about. 
Like, I know she's mentioned it before, and I meant to say something, but it's like, oh, this isn't even, like, the whole group, right? Like, they weren't, like, aware that Sirius was collapsing, and they all just, like, took off la-di-da. Like, it happened very fast, and you probably had to be in the right spot at the right time in order to survive, you know? And there were probably much more of them, and now there are much less. And, like, I'm also just kind of curious. Like, I know that they're immortal, but, like, do they want more people? Like, are they planning on having babies? Are they planning on making more humans, you know, in their own image via, like, cloning or, or uh, some sort of genetic technology, you know? Um, like, or they just wanted to be themselves for, like, the rest of eternity. Because, honestly, like... I think a lot of people who have read, like, anything about, like, immortals or vampires or whatever, like, one of the big things that comes up in this sort of, you know, fantastical, you know, um, what do you call it? Like, uh, an idea of something that doesn't actually occur, but, like, immortality comes with loneliness, right? Like, you watch everybody that you love die, and you think, at first you think, oh, I'm gonna have all this time to do all these things, and then maybe you don't, you know? You just kind of wallow or stick with what you know or... And then, like, you slowly more and more, like, you lose people, and then, like, you're alone, you know? So, like, sure, maybe a longer lifespan would be great, but immortal sounds honestly terrible. Like, who was it? I don't know if it was in this game or in something else I was watching, but I think it was in Vox Machina, actually, and this is in a lot of different medias, too, where they say, I don't know who this originally comes from, but it's death makes life worth living, you know? Like, it it is an end to something. Like, it is... I don't know, you could go, you could philosophize on and on about that, but truly, I think that is a very true statement, so. Okay. I'll let you know when it's time. I'll be here until then. And thank you, Aloy, for giving me this chance. My past has always been a struggle. More than once, I've lost everything. But when I look to the future, I see Liz's dream fulfilled. A universe of new possibilities. Maybe we can make it happen. We will. I won't let anything get in the way. I promise you that. Eh. Eh. Does that mean she's only gonna make sure like her and I survive this? You know, or that that's like her goal, you know? Anyway, this is a super long episode, but like I didn't want to like separate all the chatting out. So uh, there you go. Thank you guys for watching this. I appreciate it. Really quick, I want to say thank you to my patrons, to all my patrons, but to especially Riskalito, my sapling tier patron. Thank you so much for your support. And an extra special shout out to Adam, my tree tier patron. Thank you so so much for your support, my friend. I really do appreciate it a lot, and I hope you're doing well. And I want to give an extra extra special shout out to Christopher, my forest tier patron, who has gone above and beyond in their support for me, and I really, really do appreciate it a lot. Your kindness is overwhelming and awesome, and I really appreciate it a lot. So thank you all again for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.